Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, the meanings of these, verse, of these verses are, and we shall try you with loss. We shall try you with fear. Some kind of fear, some kind of tribulation and hunger, lack of food, lack of nutrition, lack of resources. And the loss of selves, the loss of people, the loss of people that are close to you, people that you're concerned with, people that you love, and loss of property and wealth, and loss of vegetation, and loss of the things or the luxuries that you are used to. We shall try you with this. So life, the meaning in this verse is that life will never be the same. There are good days, there are bad days. So sometimes you will be tried. The things that you take for granted will be taken away from you. One day, you will not find them. You will miss them. And that's the nature of this life. So Allah is preparing us for that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes this. So He's explaining or He's describing the reality and the nature of this life. That the things that you take for granted, the things that you, you are used to and you, you've, you've grown attached to, these things we shall try you by taking them away from you. We want to test you. So we will take these things away from you and cause you some discomfort. Will cause you fear will cause you tribulation. The circumstances will change. The tide will turn, will turn against you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes this verse by saying, وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And give the glad tidings to us sabirin the ones that are patient. The ones who manage to develop the trait of patience and the practice of patience within themselves. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً they are the ones Allah describes and reveals who are as-sabirin. He says, "Alladina ida asabatum musiba." They are the ones that, when they are tried and hit with hardship, calamity, and tribulation, any of the tribulations that we just mentioned in the previous verse, the response is, "Qalu inna lillah wa inna ilayhi rajiun." They say when they are tested, when they are tried. When they are challenged, when they are troubled, when they face all of these adverse circumstances and times of tribulation, all they say, Inna lillah, we belong to Allah. We belong to Allah. Wa inna ilayhi raji'un, and we shall return unto Him. We are returning to Allah. We came from Allah and we will return back to Allah. So that's a summary of life. So they put life in perspective and that equips them and develops within them the trait of a sabr. It gives them the patience, the forbearance, the perseverance, the consistency, the resilience, the balance to face these ups and downs of life with this powerful trait that we call in Arabic a sabr. So whatever happens in life, they have this balance. They never lose perspective. They're never thrown out of this beautiful state of balance. So, and they don't see, they don't only say these words with their tongues because a Muslim is supposed to have his tongue and his body and his heart all at the same level, all speaking or making the same statement. Otherwise, that would be hypocrisy. So when someone says, I'm not upset, but they are upset, that shows lack of consistency, incongruency. They have something in their heart. They tell you, I like you, I respect you, but deep in their hearts, they despise you. And they don't have any respect for you. That's not the state of a believer. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ Allah says at the times of hardship, that's what these people say. And they don't only say this with their tongues. They say it truly with their tongues. But that reflects the state of the heart. So their tongue is merely expressing what they feel and what they experience in their hearts. Their tongues describe the state of their heart. And that's where the power comes from. That's where the resilience comes from. That's where the balance comes from. And that explains the beautiful life and seerah of our 
great Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his companions that the times of ease never caused them to transgress or oppress or take advantage of the circumstances. On the contrary, and the hard times never make them lose hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were always connected to Allah and this is how every Muslim should be. At least strive to attain that level of maturity and that level of faith and that level of Iman. Patience is a way of life. It's not only a theoretical concept that we just talk about. It is not something to brag about. It's not about, it's not something to pretend to have. It's not something that you can fake. Patience is a state of heart, is a state of mind that you experience the peace within, regardless of how turbulent the times outside are. That's what patience is. It's the calm, it's the peace, it's the serenity, it's the assuredness that we have in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless of how our lives or how our days turn, up, turn out to be. That's what patience means. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises patience in the Quran so often that the word patience or the concept of patience was mentioned in the Quran more than 90 times. More than 90 times. And all of them are in positive terms. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, says, وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ وَاللَّهُ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ And indeed, Allah is with the patient ones. And when Allah is with you, that's a powerful thing. It's not just a theory. It's not just, it's not just a claim. It is something that has an impact on your experience, on your life, on your state. It has an impact on what you're going through. Allah is with you and when Allah is with you, it doesn't matter who is against you. Because Allah is with you. And when Allah is with you, everything will turn out to be in your own favor. Everything will turn out to be a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you have to hold on to patience and that's the condition. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ta ta will try his servants. And Allah will test them. Sometimes it will be severe tests. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, فَمَنْ رَضِيَ فَلَهُ الرِّضَى The one who is pleasant and pleased with Allah, the one who is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then for him will be the pleasure of Allah. And everything will turn to be in his favor. وَمَنْ سَخِطَ فَلَهُ الصُّخْطِ And the one who is impatient, the one who is unhappy, the one who is displeased with Allah, why does Allah test me? Oh Allah, why me? Why do these things happen to me? Why not someone else? Why do I have to go through all of these? This attitude is called in Arabic as sukht. And the Prophet ﷺ says, وَمَنْ سَخِطَ فَلَهُ السُّخْطِ And the one who is displeased with what Allah brings his way, then for him will be the displeasure of Allah. So he will have to go through the hardship because that kind of displeasure, that kind of despair will not take away the calamity, will not change the condition, and it will not change the circumstances. Everything will be the same. It's a hardship, you'll have to go through it. It's a calamity, you have to experience it. It's a pain, you have to feel it. So the words of complaint that you say, they don't make any sense. Practically, they're not going to change anything. And worse off, they actually make the pain even severer because you put yourself in a victimizer, in a victim mentality. It's, it's, it's the attitude of victimization. When you feel you don't have control, you feel you don't have choice, you feel you can't do anything, you're helpless. But we know that the Muslim can never feel helpless if he is true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or if she is true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know if we can't change the condition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted things to be so. So what we do, we embrace them. We see the deeper side of what is happening. We realize Allah wants good for us, even though we can't see it at the moment. And you can just reflect on your past life. Look at the hardships. Look at the pains. Look at the traumas that you've been through. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Contemplate upon them. Now you're not suffering from them at all. They became memories. And if you reflect deeply, you would see that these things have come about in your life and brought about gifts with them.
You've grown after the calamity. You've learned something about yourself. You've learned something about Allah. You became closer to Allah. You developed a higher level of resilience and patience and maturity as a human being. It revealed to you who are the true ones to you and who are your fake friends. Every calamity holds in its own womb the seed of a greater and of a greater opportunity, of a greater blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Indeed, with every hardship, with every calamity, there is ease. Indeed, again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats emphatically, says the statement again, with every ease, with every hardship, there is ease. So with every hardship, if you, if you manage to reach and tap into the other side of it, you will see the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is how we Muslims are supposed to be. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes patience or the way he refers to patience as well. As well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin. And Allah loves the patient ones. And Allah doesn't give his ultimate love for anyone. Allah gives his love only for the people who deserve it, for the special ones. And that shows that patience is a deep trait, is a great achievement if you are able to achieve it in your life. It's a way of living. And by the way, sometimes when we talk about patience, I don't know personally, I've been trying to understand where the negativity comes about in, when we perceive patience, when we try to understand patience, we think that when we talk about patience, or when Allah in the Quran refers to patience, or the Prophet ﷺ refers to patience, we think we have to live a miserable life and go through hardship and live miserably. We, that's, that's the perception that I find within myself and so many other people about patience. No, patience takes you into paradise when you are suffering on earth. That's the meaning of it. That's what patience is. It takes you into a feel of paradise when you are going through the hardship, when you are going through the pain. That's what patience means. So it doesn't talk about misery. It talks about transcending pain and misery. It talks about conne being connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeing the wisdom of Allah in everything that happens in your life, even though you don't figure it out completely. But you trust in Allah. And that trust and that letting go and that belief in Allah will bring about so much peace and love and expansion in your chest. That's why, for example, you will find people like Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. His famous statement, he said, what can my enemies do to me? You know, you can't be, so, you can't be more free than Ibn, than Ibn Taymiyyah saying that statement. What can, what can my enemies do to me? What kind of damage can they extend to me? مَا يَفْعَلُ أَعْدَائِي بِي إِنْ قَتَلُونِي فَقَتْلِي شَهَادَةً إِنْ سَجَنُونِي فَسَجْنِي خَلْوَةً وَإِنْ نَفَوْنِي فَنَفْيِي سِيَاحَةً أَوْ وَإِنْ نَفَوْنِي إِلَى قُبْرُسْ لَدَعَوْتُ أَهْلَهَا لِلْإِسْلَامِ وَلَا أَسْلَمُ He says, what can my enemies do to me? They can't even get to me. If they kill me, that's my buddy. They haven't reached me. That's martyrdom for me, that's shahada, and that's one of my ultimate goals. Where can I get this honor from? Something I'm looking forward to. If they put me in prison, that's a time of seclusion and peace of mind that I've always been searching for because Ibn Taymiyyah was under so much demand from people, questions. People are asking him for fatawa, people are asking him for advice, people are asking him for knowledge, people are asking him for help as well. He never had time for himself. He had very little time for himself. He wanted to spend time just reciting Quran, remembering Allah, praying for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He just wanted to do more worship, but he had no time to do it. So he says, if they put me in prison, they've done me a great favor. Please go ahead, do it. And if they exile me, they push me out of my land, that's for me traveling and I love doing this. I love seeing the creation of Allah, seeing, seeing the different cultures, the different lands. And in another, another time he said something similar and he said, if they exile me to Cyprus, because it, it's, it's an island in the ocean, in the Mediterranean. So he said, if they exile me and send me to Cyprus, I will call its people, I'll invite them to Islam and they will respond by the will of Allah. What can these people do to me? 
How can you get to someone like this? How can you be more free th than this? Patience is liberating. It's powerful. And if you read through the Quran, through the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, consider his life, reflect upon it, you will see patience is there. And it's a pleasant thing. It's a source of happiness. It's a, a source of tranquility and peace in one's life. And that's what we are supposed to develop in our, within ourselves. But if we keep looking at patience as a miserable experience, that's because we've been faking it for so long that we start mixing up between the true patience and the fake patience. We pretend that we are patient when we are not. So if we want the love of Allah, and when Allah loves you, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. And when Allah loves you this life, you will experience it differently. And when Allah is with you, there's nothing for you to fear, nothing for you to worry about. Because everything that people are competing for, everything are, that people are fighting with each other for, everything that people are dying for, you've already, you already have it. You already possess it. You'll find that richness and that wealth in your heart as the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-ghina ghina nafs The Prophet ﷺ said, richness and wealth is wealth in the self. Is wealth of your soul. Because what people are searching for is a mirage. You can find it within yourself. The sense of richness, you don't have to search for it outside. And once you can find it inside, and when you find it inside, it's al qanaa it's contentment. And when you find it, you'll be surprised that the riches of the world will start flowing to you. Because Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves someone, and someone is truthful to Allah, Allah will give them more. وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And Allah declared and made it clear that if you are thankful to Allah, if you are grateful, and what, how can you be more grateful than being patient for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That's real thankfulness. Then Allah shall increase you more. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم من كل ذنب فاستغفر الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. Often times we don't really understand patience and we think patience means when someone gets at your nerves, you hold yourself back. That's part of patience. But patience takes so many shapes. And patience, the, word, the English word patience does not reveal and does not convey the intensity and the depth and the velocity of the word as sabr So part of patience is to be patient and to be persistent in your worship for the sake of Allah. When everything th seems to be against you, when holding on to the true religion and the true guidance that came to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when it becomes difficult for you to observe the five daily prayers, when it becomes difficult for you to focus and bring about your heart and your mind and experience khushur in salah, when you are striving to achieve this, that's patience. When you do the things that Allah wants you to do, like you pay from your own money for the sake of Allah, that requires a lot of patience because you're holding the desire of yourself back. You're transcending it by giving what you love for yourself. You're, going, you're giving it to someone else or to, or to, to, uh, to an organization or to, in another cause. That requires a lot of patience and that's part of a sabr. That's part of patience. That's not conveyed by the word patience. So when... When you observe the rights of Allah and you keep yourself dutiful to Allah, doing everything that Allah wants from you and you strive for that, especially at our times when it's very difficult, that's a great part of a sabr. Another type of a sabr and patience is to keep hold yourself back from the things that are haram. The things that Allah hates, the things that Allah despises and that Allah made prohibited. When you hold yourself back from the temptations, that takes a lot of willpower and that's patience. When you hold yourself, you hold your gaze and you don't stare at things that are haram for you. It takes a lot of resilience. It takes a lot of power. It takes a lot of manhood. It takes a lot of will. And that's patience. So when you hold yourself back from the sin, when you are tempted to engage in any haram transaction, even though it gives you the impression that things will be much easier if you engage in it, 
You hold yourself back for the sake of Allah and you know that Allah will give you a way out that is better than this. That requires patience. Another form of patience is that you are patient with whatever befalls you in this life, whatever comes your way. You know, that's the nature of this life. No one will live this life in a state of ease. No one. Even if you live a life of affluence, hardship and trials will come to you from a different kind. It, if, if you're not tried with financial hardship, Allah will try you with emotional hardship. Allah will try you with relational hardship and social hardship. Allah will try you with personal hardship. Allah will try you with other calamities. So that's the nature of this life. Don't expect more from this life. True happiness, true tranquility and peace can only be found in Jannah, in paradise. This life was not created for you to live happily ever after. It wasn't created for you to have an easy life throughout the stages. No. If life is treating you so rosy and so well and is so easy on you, there's something wrong about you. You might have lost your mind. You might be living in your imagination. Because life is going to be hard. And it's not going to be hard all the way. All, there, will, there are ups and downs. And this is how life works. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتِلْكَ الْأَيَّامُ نُدَاوِلُهَا بَيْنَ النَّاسِ And these are the days that we alternate between people. So Allah is going to alternate your life. It's going to be times of ease and times of hardship. So in order to handle this fluctuating nature of life, you need a lot of patience. Patience so when good things come to you, you don't transgress. You don't oppress others. You don't take advantage to the negligence of other rights. And when life treats you harsh, you do not lose hope. You do not fall in despair. You do not, you do not lose hope in Allah's mercy. You do not complain about Allah. Al-Fudayl ibn Iyad says, whoever goes through an ha a hardship, whoever goes through a hardship and he complains and he's not patient, then he is accusing Allah in his wisdom. He's accusing Allah's wisdom, that Allah doesn't have wisdom. Another type of patience that we need is patience in relationships. You will be tried by your spouse. There's no perfect wife on this earth. There's no perfect husband. There's no perfect parent. There's no perfect child. There's no perfect friend. There's no perfect imam. There's no perfect layman. There's no perfect man or woman. We're all human beings. We have our faults. We have our mistakes. We have our transgressions. So if you are not patient, if you want the perfect wife, you're setting yourself up for a lot of hardship and emotional pain. If you expect your husband to be the best man in the world, to be the best ever, to treat you like the best kind of treatment, then you're fooling yourself. Because this life is not designed for this and it will never be like this. So be ready for this life. What's the big deal? And the good news is we can always transcend the immediate reality. We experience it. We experience everything in it. If it's ease, we, we enjoy that ease. As the Prophet ﷺ says, Inna Allah yuhibbu an yara athara ni'matihi ala abdih. That Allah loves to see the signs of His blessings upon His servant. Allah loves it when He gives you money, that there are signs of wealth on you. But not to be extravagant, not to start showing off. But if Allah has given you a life of ease in terms financially, Allah wants to see the signs of that on you. So you enjoy this ease and you benefit from it and you use it for in a good cause. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tries you with hardship, you also go through the pain and you experience it and you acknowledge it. And you know that it's okay for me to feel sad. It's, it's okay for me to go through the pain, to experience it, to be frustrated. But not to lose hope with Allah. Still my heart is connected to Allah and I know that Allah brings a good day and a bad day. And this is a test for me to deal with. This is how we can survive through this life. So in relationships, you will need a lot of patience. You will need your, your son or your daughter will misbehave. They will sometimes commit grave mistakes. Some, sometimes there might be as teenagers, some really serious mistakes, but you have to be patient and not, not lose hope. Never even give up on them. You might have a harsh parent. You might have been traumatized as a, as a child. And it's been having an impact on you. 
That's the nature of this life. That's your trial. Why not survive it? Why, why not take it as a stairway to Allah? Why not use it as an opportunity for you to grow and transcend and become a better person? Become re more resilient for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is another aspect of, of a sabr, which is in relationships. Another part of patience that we need is in our endeavors. A lot of people, people give up so early, too early on their dreams and on their projects. You start a business, you start a profession, you start working in a job, you start, once you face the first few obstacles, you start giving up on your goals, playing victim, saying the system is against me, or I don't have enough finances, I've tried this, I put my invest all my uh, savings in this project and it failed. Start again, get back on your feet, start again. That's part of a sabr, consistency, resilience. That you face life as a man, you don't give up. Life is gonna knock you down. It will punch you and it will beat you and it will put you to the ground. But you know that's never the end. Allah, put, Allah created this life and this is its nature. We've created man to toil, to work hard and suffer and struggle in this life. But the struggle is external. Never take it to heart. Never take a defeat. Never take a setback into heart. You will fall. You will fall often and often, hundreds of times before you make it for the first time. And all of these failures are steps leading you into your success. That's part of patience. That's part of sabr that we don't seem to explore and benefit from. So how can we develop patience in our lives? It's a very simple way. When you wake up in the morning, every day, this week, from today until next Friday, all you need to do is when you wake up in the morning, just make a covenant, an agreement between you and Allah. Oh Allah, today I will look out for opportunities to be patient. I will look out for opportunities to be patient. Your wife, your husband is not feeling well today. They're not speaking to you well. They come across offensive. Be ready for that. Say, okay, that's my opportunity. That's an opportunity for me to be patient. Your child misbehaves and he gets at your nerves or she gets at your nerves, say, okay, this is an opportunity for me. So instead of you picking on them, punishing them, telling them off or blaming them, say, this is an opportunity for me. I will explore this aspect of me that I've, been, that I've neglected for so long. I will be patient today for the sake of Allah. Oh Allah, help me be patient with this. So that's an opportunity. Exercise patience. You're driving in the street, someone, someone cuts you up, pushes in front of you. A word of swearing wants to come out of your mouth, say, I'll hold it back for the sake of Allah. I'll be patient. I'll let it go. I'll forget it for you, O oh Allah. So look out throughout the day for opportunities to be patient. Your colleague, your boss, anyone gets at your nerves. Make it a point throughout this week to be patient and bring about patience from your heart. That I'm going to be a patient person. I will explore this new aspect of myself that Allah has given me and he wants me to hold on to it, I will explore it this week and I will look out for opportunities to be patient. Most of us miss out on patience because it's not on our minds and we only remember it when we make a mistake. Only when we mistreat the other person and we lose our temper. So you preemptively deal with this by having patience on your mind before you even start the day and look out for opportunities. Now I will close by reminding you of these, of first that by the end of this year, the end of this month, inshallah, uh, you know, the next payment for purchasing the next door building is actually due. And we need your support there. There are some finances on the way, but for some reasons they are delayed. They are delayed. So we want, if you can give donations, whatever donations you want to give to the masjid for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're encouraged to do this. But what you can do as well is give the masjid sadaqah. Oh, give the masjid a loan. Give the masjid a loan. Give the masjid a loan. And this is Al Qardul Hassan. And the Prophet ﷺ said that for every dirham, for every dollar, for example, you give as sadaqah, it will be written, or you give as a loan, you give as a loan, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write for you half that value as a sadaqah. So you 
give the masjid, for example, a loan to pay off this debt, $50,000, it will be registered with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you have given in charity as a sadaqah $25,000. That's what the Prophet ﷺ says. So help us out, pay off, or make this payment inshallah by the end of the month because time is running fast. And as I said, some finances have been delayed for some reasons. So whatever you can, give the masjid as a sadaqah. Alhamdulillah, the ones who already uh, gave the masjid a loan or a qadrul hasan from last year and they requested it, alhamdulillah, they've been paid off. Everyone who gave the masjid uh, qardul hasan and they requested it, it has been paid off. They've been given that money back, alhamdulillah. So what we... Any, any value that you can give the masjid as Qardul uh, Hasan, as a loan, so do that inshallah, and inshallah you will get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we urge you inshallah to do uh, your best in this regard. The second thing is to remind you of the Quran competition that will be inshallah next weekend. So come early on Saturday. Uh, great guests are coming, mashallah. It is such a great uh, honor and privilege to be really, to have them there. Sheikh Ahmed Al Ma'sarawi and Sheikh Abdul Rashid Sufi. These are probably the great Qaris of our time. These are the greatest Qaris of our time. So it's a great opportunity. And also to encourage your children. When you bring your children and they see these young brothers and sisters, how they've memorized the Quran, they're working hard, and mashallah, they're proud of being a Muslim. You know, it gives you such a powerful push and such a powerful feel about. You know how Muslims, alhamdulillah, are preserving their religion, keeping themselves true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite the hardships and the challenges that they are facing in these countries.